Hello YouTube, it's Wednesday, April 15th, and uh, yesterday my father-in-law brought over a piece from his reclining chair that is broken. I'm going to try to recreate that piece with some sort of scrap metal that I have in the garage, and so I thought I'd make a video of it. This is that video. What do you think, Quasar? What do you think about all this? Did you know it snowed last night? You're not sure, eh? First things first, we've got to get some measurements of this and then see if I have a material that's even close to those dimensions. I've got a rag with some alcohol on it. If you're from the future, Look up the year 2020 and you'll see why I'm wiping this down with alcohol. Alright, measurements. So 16 millimeter, 632 thou, which is what, 5 eighths? Here's an easy way to uh, find out what size something is, if it's a nominal size anyway. Take a wrench. Put it over it. Five eighths. Overall length is about 5.2 inches. So now we gotta find a piece of material that we can use. I keep my material basically in two separate piles. I have this stuff that is longer stuff. I have this square stuff that is definitely too big. That's one inch. I have this solid bar of aluminum but I don't really want to cut that up that doesn't make a whole lot of sense so see what we have over here this is where I keep all my cut off bits and shorter pieces I've got this that I got from somebody maybe from my father-in-law All right, so let's take this and turn it into a functional piece. One of the most time consuming parts of any job on a mill or a lathe is setup. And that's especially true if you're already using your mill for something. And in this case, I am. Out. Now I've got to figure out how to put this in there in a way that I can actually work on it. I'm going to get you guys a little bit closer. Place goes there. All right, I finally found my mounting bolts, and in the process of looking for them, I actually found a T nut and another nut that I had lost a long time ago. So that's good. Ordinarily, if I was doing really precise work, I would clean off the table really well. Uh, run a stone over it to make sure there was no high spots and then I would set my vise in place and use a dial indicator to make sure that the jaw was completely parallel to the table but because this job doesn't require great accuracy and because the vise is going to be coming right off after this job I'm just going to do it by sliding it against the t-slots and that will be within a couple of thousandths of an inch. What I'm going to do is, without cleaning the rust off of it or anything, I'm going to pop it into the vise. I'm going to 
drill a hole, make a slot, and then cut it the length. And then once I take it out of the vise, I'll clean it up with a sanding disc. I'm just going to eyeball this part because it doesn't need to be terribly accurate. Tighten these up now that it's basically in place. I need to measure the hole to see what size bit I need and it is 195 so about 3 16 and as luck would have it I have a 3 16 but I recently snapped the end off of it and I haven't got a new one. So what I'm going to have to do is actually drill three 3 16 holes and then come back with the end mill and mill out the slot. So it's going to be a little bit of a pain but better than doing it with a file or a butter knife. We'll call that 624 so 312 is half so we'll set this to 312 312.5 and now we'll use that to mark the center. Now I need to change the speed of the mill because the way it's set up right now is at the slowest speed which is this. And in order to turn a 3 16 bit I need it to turn a heck of a lot faster than that. This is how I have to change the speed setting the same way that you would with a drill press. These are the tools that we're going to need to do the operations. I have a 3 16 R8 collet. And that is going to be used to hold the spot drill or the center drill that will go in there. And then once that is done, the same collet will hold the 3 16 drill bit. And then once that operation is done, we will take that collet out, install the 3 8 collet, and then use the 3 16 end mill in there to mill out the slot. So, okay, so we've got to open up the top, pop in the R8 collet. I know you can't see what I'm doing up top here, but that's just going to have to be the way it is. Tighten that in. Alright, so now we're going to lower the quill and center up our hole. I will now measure off to where the center of this hole is so that we can place that hole where we want it. And that is going to be right there. And then the second hole starts three inches from the first one. So three inches from there, we'll mark off. Again, I don't think these measurements are terribly critical or I would take more care to get them precise. 1.5 and that's the center of our second slot hole. Just about center right there. there. And then now we're ready to drill our first pilot hole.
I'm going to take that tool out, switch to the 3 16 drill bit. This way I don't have to try to find the center of my hole because it's already on center. We'll pop the 3 16 drill bit in. Give it another spritz. And drill the hole out. Anytime I'm using a drill press or the drill on my mill, I'm always reminded of the scene from Superbad where the kid's just drilling holes and stuff randomly. Now that we have that hole drilled, this end is completely done. All we need there is a hole. So now I'm going to move down here. Okay, there we are on dead center. Try to get a different angle here. A little bit of spritz there. Get everything tightened down. Y'all make sure to let me know in the comments how dangerous this is or how stupid it is, how it won't work. I'm going to set you guys over here for this next operation because using an end mill is going to cause a lot of chips to fly everywhere. pretty well but uh, I don't think there's really much for you guys to see <laughs> okay so we have the slot machined out now what I need to do is cut it off the length so for that I'm gonna actually take it out of this vise and take it over to my other vise so I think because I have it I will use this vise or my bandsaw it's the 
easiest way to do it. It'll make a nice clean cut. So why not? We just need to clean it up. Here is the old broken part, looking pretty sad. And here is the new shiny part, looking all spiffy. All that needs to be done now is install it and kick back and relax. Get it? Because it's for a reclining chair. Kick back and relax. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Here's the old broken part. And here's the nice new shiny one. <coughs> All that needs to be done now is... So here's the old broken part. And here's the nice new shiny part. All that needs to be done now is remove this cat hair. Because cat hair is everywhere.